There are a lot of things that the DJs can do while performing except just mixing two tracks. And one of them happens to be finger drumming. That's right, in this video, I'm here to introduce you to the art of finger drumming and teach you some basics. Let's jump right into it. What's good you guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Deep and this is where I do a lot of DJing and tech related tutorials, tips and tricks to help you become a better DJ and to help you get better at using technology. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Finger drumming is a technique in which the performer uses the pads on a MIDI controller to perform and play sounds in a pattern. And to do this, you will need a combination of software and hardware. There are a lot of softwares that do this, including most major DJ softwares. But in this video, I'm gonna show you this technique using Ableton. And the hardware I choose today is the Novation Launchpad, which is, I think, at least eight to 10 years old. But guess what? You can actually do this on your DJ controller or any MIDI controller that has performance pads. Great, now let me show you the setup process. All right, so the process to set this up is extremely simple. Let's jump into the laptop and I'm gonna show you how to do that. As I mentioned, I'm using Ableton. This is how my Ableton screen looks like right now because I have my drum rack set up already. But let me show you how to do this by creating a new drum rack. To create a new drum rack, you can right click on this section here and alternatively, you can also click on the create menu and click on insert MIDI track because this drum rack works over MIDI. So let's right click here and add or insert a new MIDI track. Let's rename this by right clicking on it again and selecting rename. I'm gonna call it drum rack, but you can call it whatever you like. Once done, it's time to add the drum rack plugin which is built into this software. To do this, click on the arrow here on the left and that will open up the browser. Now, search for the drum rack in the search bar. Then, double click on it to add or drag and drop it here where it says drop an instrument or sample. So, drum rack is actually a MIDI instrument. Once done, if you can see the MIDI controller, whatever pad is pressed here, a light turns on in the software as well. That indicates where that particular pad is placed on the drum rack. So if you want to add a sound to this pad here, I have to scroll up on the drum rack and you can see that the pad responds in the software and it's this one here called c -Fi. But you can't hear a sound right now because it's not added. Let's add the sounds to this now. To add the sound, go to your folder where you have your sounds. You can download them online for free, but I'm using the sounds from my last project called Dance Monkey. So let's drag and drop the sound of the kick drum into the C5 pad. Now that this is added, this pad becomes the kick drum. Now let's add the hi-hat to the pad above the kick drum. Perfect. Now let's add the clap sound to this pad here called A5. Perfect. Now let's add the last sound, the Congo sound of the left and the right in the C sharp 6 and the C6 pad. Once done, all your sounds should be here. This is the kick drum. And this is the hi-hat. This is your clap. And these are your Congos, the left and the right. Okay, so now when you perform, this is how it'll sound. Okay, now that is the setup process. It's extremely simple. Okay, now that you see the screen, I have added a few more sounds. Okay, now listen to the sounds first. The sound of the kick drum. The sound of the hi-hat. The sound of the snare. The sound of the cymbal. Okay, so those are the four more sounds that I've added. I've added a few more things, like this one, like that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one as well. So all of these sounds I have added because I'm gonna perform using these sounds. Okay, now that you know how to set this up, I'm gonna show you how to practice and how to perform. When you're finger drumming, you need to think like a drummer you need to think what kind of a sound you need out of your instrument. In this case, our instrument is this MIDI controller, okay? So 
I'm going to play a certain pattern that I have in mind. Now, there are many ways to practice. I usually practice on the table so I can do and I can try to bring that here. You know, when you're not able to think of a sound, what you can do instead is just start performing. So let's start by just pressing the kick four times. Now the trick to finger drumming is to start slow, okay? Whatever you want to go with, whatever you want to perform, start slow. When you're practicing, it's important that you start slow because when you start slow, you can become better when you're performing in the nightclub, when you're performing, trying to perform complex things on the MIDI controller. So let's do that again. Okay, now let's try to add the snare along with it. But instead of all four times, let's add the snare on the second kick. Right? Did you understand that? Instead of the kick, I played the snare. Now let's try to play them together for at least one bar. Okay, now when you practice this enough, you can then start adding other elements like the hi-hats. That's when you do. Okay, did you notice I played the kick twice? You don't have to do that. That's just my instincts telling me to do that. It's just in the mind. But let me do it without the double kick. Yes, you can do it with one finger as well. But then that's not really necessary. You can use, you have five fingers. You have 10 fingers actually. Now, these 10 fingers can be used to, to perform 10 different sounds at the same time if you can let your mind control that, okay? So, obviously when you have never tried this, it's gonna be difficult, but when you practice, you can do this, okay? So, I'm gonna do this again, but this time, I'm gonna use just one hand. Start slow, see? If you can't do it faster, I always recommend to start slow because when you start slow, you can develop this easily. When you get a little bit more comfortable with that pattern, you can increase your speed. And when you get really comfortable, you can increase even more. It just depends on how you want to do it, okay? Now, another thing I wanted to mention here is the placement of your sounds okay now because our if because i'm using the right hand and the thumb is on the left and this is the top section that i'm using okay what i did is i added the kick here okay and then because my hand is in this like the way the, the way the hand is shaped when you're putting it on top of the midi controller is it, it's like it's this is your natural position so naturally if you can see on the other camera that when when i perform my finger is naturally over here. In, if I put this other sound somewhere over here, I will have to do, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. I really don't want to do that. So I have placed the sounds uh, in the comfort zone that my hand sits on top of this controller. You can use any other controller. There are several controllers here and the pads, the pads are usually in this format. You can use any controller. I'm telling you again, you can use any controller that has performance pads the most important thing is the placement of the sounds. Okay, now when you've mastered the right hand, you can start using your left hand to perform as well, just by adding other sounds. Instead of just doing... You can use your left hand to play other sounds along with this to make, make it sound a little more better. I'm gonna perform now. Did you get that? So when you add other sounds, that is when you can actually perform the entire song on the MIDI controller, on the performance pads, okay? Now, let me just perform this entire sequence that I've created with all of these sounds. I'm gonna try to use as much sounds as possible. Let's go ahead with it.
so on and so forth. You can just continue to do this. You can have a great time using the MIDI controller, using your imagination, whatever sound that you want, you can add to the performance pads. Now I'm gonna show you the other sequence that I have here. Okay, now this is the other sequence and this is how that sounds. A very electronic kick drum, and then the clap, and then the hi-hat. And I also have the congos, the left and the right. So those are all the sounds that I've added in the second sequence. Now, when I perform slow, I can use both my hands and try to perform a pattern. Let's hear that now. This is the first kick drum pattern. Now let's implement the left hand as well. So that's how I made my last track, which is Dance Monkey. And I started off with just that. And then I spoke to the singer and then she said, okay. And then a whole lot of things that happened. I added my keyboard, a lot of things. So it's the inspiration. Whenever it, it hits you, whenever a certain kind of a pattern hits your mind, perform it on your performance pads and you can implement it later. Now, when you are really comfortable with using the performance pads, let me show you another sequence that I created. Now, this is a very popular track. Okay, and I have added that to this sequence. Okay, I'm going to play the sounds first. Now, these are multiple sounds on the same pad. Okay, remember that. Did you hear that? Now, when you perform them in sequence, this is how it can sound. Now try to guess the song. That's right, you can actually perform the entire track on the launch pad once you get really comfortable. Also, there's a lot to do with the software. The software plays a very important role in this as well. So choose your software wisely. But when you get really comfortable, I'm sure things like this is gonna be very natural to you. And when you practice enough, you can actually go on stage with this setup, no DJ console at all, and just perform. And then go on with the night just by performing. Obviously, you can also try to add in loops, you can try to add in long sequences so that you don't have to constantly press a button to perform you know you can sample a certain kind of a loop like four kicks and then ta 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 four kicks continues to play and then you add your instrument on top so there are a lot of ways of using live instruments in your dj set but i don't know why in india it's not really popular it is it is there i'm not saying that people aren't there to perform live but then i'm saying that there are a lot of us who are talented it's just that they need to take out some time, they need to practice a bit, and they can make a name for themselves in this platform as well. All right, I'm gonna perform one last time for you guys. So I did this on the Novation Launchpad, but you can actually do this on your DJ controller as well. In fact, you must go ahead and check out this video in which I performed an entire track using just my DDJ 400, the performance pads on that, and I also used the keyboard. If you guys are interested to learn how I did that, please let me know down in the comments below and I will make a video about that as well. There you go guys, that was the basic introduction to the art of finger drumming. This particular technique is not very popular here in India and I hope that by the help of this video, some of you can get inspired and try to implement this technique in their DJ routine. Like always, if you guys have any doubts, please don't forget to comment in the comment section below and ask me your questions. You can also follow me on Instagram and ask me your questions there. I reply to almost all of my DMs. 
that's right and the most important thing guys please don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel because that is probably the only thing that you guys can do to support me so that i can continue to make such quality content for you guys and for free that's it for today guys i'll see you guys in the next one happy to help